If you've been playing Red Dead Online for a decent amount of time, you probably think you know pretty much everything there is to know about the game. But in this video, I'm going to blow your mind by showing you some insane features that only the top 0.1% of Red Dead Online players know. Trust me, you don't want to miss a second of this video. Before we get into this video, let's just take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Instant Gaming. Now, Instant Gaming isn't like every other business out there, because they want you to save money rather than spend it. Instant Gaming basically offers the flagship games that you want for a fraction of the price. It's literally a dream come true from gamers like you and me. They also offer pretty cheap top-up cards, which is an added bonus. So, if you want to get your hands on flagship games for half the price, or even less, make sure to head to the link in the bio of this video. And hey, there's no need to thank me. So the first thing that literally no Red Dead player knows about is this secret weapon called Lowry's Revolver. It's an absolutely awesome sidearm, but you can't exactly walk into the gun store and buy it off the shelf. To unlock the Lowry Revolver, you actually need to play GTA 5. So load up GTA, and then from there, you need to solve the Los Santos Slasher Mystery. Doing this will give you access to the Navy Revolver. Then go ahead and get 50 kills with the Navy Revolver. After you've done this, the Lowry Revolver will unlock in Red Dead Online. To find it, simply head on over to the underground lair of Edmund Lowry Jr., which is just outside Valentine. Once you made it to the basement, you should find a lockbox, unlock it, and then boom, you have a new weapon to use. Because most people either don't know about this weapon, don't play GTA Online, or don't want to go through the effort of unlocking it, having the Lowry Revolver will make you a standout player in Red Dead Online. Do you know the legendary bounty hunter's name? Or do you just refer to her as the legendary bounty hunter? Well, hardly anyone knows this and it's a bit of a trick, but the legendary bounty hunter doesn't actually have a name. To be fair, players only get to see her during the bounty hunter cinematic right at the start of the game, and you only get to hear her when you start legendary bounties. Rockstar addressed this in the credits, referring to the legendary bounty hunter as the woman with no name. And this isn't just because Rockstar was feeling lazy at the time. They're actually paying homage to Clint Eastwood's character in Dollars Trilogy, which is set, you guessed it, in the Wild West. If you haven't seen the films, Clint's character doesn't have a name either, and is simply referred to as the man with no name. Funnily enough, the next fact on this list also contains Clint Eastwood. If you heard of Coot's Chapel around Armadillo, you'll be able to find the grave of an unknown person. Then just right of the church, there's a grave with a headstone that reads Cowboy, followed by Cowboy of No Name. This mysterious cowboy died in 1897, just a year before the events of Red Dead Online. Maybe, just maybe, this hints that the man with no name from the Dollars Trilogy made his way to Armadillo before hanging up his hat for the last time. Way back when Red Dead 2 was first released, you could actually get your hands on each and every story mode protagonist's outfit to use on your online character, provided you purchase the right outlaw passes. However, that was a long time ago now, and a lot of people who picked up the game upon release are no longer playing. Plus, these outfits are now locked behind a ridiculous paywall that just isn't justifiable for most people. All this means that if you're an active player who has all the story protagonist's outfits, you're easily in the top 1% of players. Pretty neat, right? So, if you didn't know, the stories of Red Dead Online and the single player mode are interlinked, with Red Dead Online being set one year prior to the events of the story mode. This chronology makes for some interesting references to the events of each mode, with some of the most interesting references coming from Madame Nazar. So, Madame Nazar is a fortune teller in the online version, and throughout the game, makes accurate predictions about the future events of the story mode. For instance, she'll tell you that the Vanderlyn gang will arrive in the region. She'll also reference the bridge that John and Arthur blew up towards the end of the game, and even talks about the ghosts in the swamps of Lemoyne. This is honestly an awesome feature because if you were to play the game chronologically without knowing what comes next, you'd actually be more aware of what's going to happen throughout the story. Your camp is pretty much seen as your safe place in Red Dead Online. However, it's not actually 100% safe, because your camp can be raided under the right circumstances. When Rockstar came out with the Frontier Pursuit update, they enabled camps to be raided. In order to open yourself up to being raided, you needed a trader business. The idea is that because you're running a business from your camp, people will try and take your goods from you by force. Thing is, you can't even buy any defenses to stop this from happening. The best you can do is get a dog who will start barking if a raid is about to happen. 
Now I'm gonna level with you here. This event is extremely rare. I've put thousands upon thousands of hours into Red Dead Online and this event has happened to me, drum roll please, twice. Yeah, crazy, right? Now, it's safe to assume that Rockstar didn't intend for this event to be quite so rare. Throughout 2019 and 2020, Rockstar had a massive problem with in-game timers, where they basically just decided to die. This affected a bunch of real-time events like camp raid events and even stopped the poison poppy moonshine recipe from spawning. Rockstar was able to get this issue solved, but quickly after, an NPC and animal spawn problem stopped the raider event from happening again. This was fixed in 2020, but I think Rockstar realized that this event would be more effort than it's worth, hence why it's so rare. So if you do get raided, you should probably consider yourself lucky. On the subject of your camp, did you know that you're actually able to see ghost animals in your camp? Literally no one knows about this, but it's one of the coolest features in the game. To do this, you're first going to need to get your hands on some Harriotum Aficionarlis. You can find this literally everywhere, so you shouldn't have an issue getting some. Once you collected your Harium Aficionarlis, go to your camp and put it all on the fire. Then use your Eagle Eye ability. Doing so will allow you to see ghost animals like a buck walking around your camp. It's pretty weird, but absolutely worth the effort. Now, you can actually take this a step further and use Harriotum Aficionarlis to transform into an animal. To do this, you need to buy into the Vitalism Studies from Harriet. This will give you access to points around the map where you can transform into an animal after placing down some Harriotum Aficionarlis and roam around for about 5 minutes before reverting back to human form. However, as cool as this sounds, you shouldn't actually be doing this. Why? Well, this feature has been broken for a couple years now. In most cases, whenever you go through the process of transforming, you initiate the cinematic transformation, spawn as an animal, and then revert back to a human in about a second, rendering all your efforts useless. This is so annoying, but the fact that Rockstar hasn't tried to fix this issue for over two years now pretty much confirms that they're never going to. A few minutes ago, I did mention that Red Dead Online and the Red Dead Story are set in the same place, just a year apart. Well, this interlinking of timelines has also paved the way for a few easter eggs that most players don't know about. Primarily, some of the easter eggs from the story mode are not present in the online mode. Honestly, I can't tell you the reason why Rockstar decided to do this, but it must have been intentional for some reason because some easter eggs have been left in and others haven't. Perhaps this all has to do with chronology or maybe there's something more meaningful going on. So there are 9 things I bet you didn't know about Red Dead Online. Ultimately, all these little details show just how big of a game Red Dead Redemption is. Rockstar could have so easily not added in any of this, because none of it has any effect on the story. But the fact that they did is one of the reasons why we all love this game so much. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out our recent guide on 25 tips to dominate Red Dead Online. I promise, it will change the way that you play.